Okay, so the beginning of this video is going to be a little strange. But first things first, hey Ava, I've noticed you wear this shirt a lot in your unboxings. What what the heck is this come and see thing? And there's actually smaller text on here that you usually don't see. And, you know, even if I got up close to the camera, which, you know, there's no autofocus here, so whatever, uh, you wouldn't be able to read it. So, considering I spend most of my time at home anyways, like the fat neck beard that I am, somebody accused me the other day. A year ago they accused me, and I only noticed it the other day. But anyways, uh, you know, what's, what's this come and see thing? Well, this is a t-shirt that comes from Holden Village, which is a Christian retreat. Well, it's a little more specifically Lutheran retreat on the eastern side of the Cascade Mountains in uh, Washington State. Uh, my mom went there many years ago. Does this have a date on it? Oh yeah, 2007, so 10 years ago I got this shirt. Or it has been 10 years I've had this shirt? Wow, this shirt's been... Well, maybe it was like manufactured in 2007, but my mom didn't get into like, okay. But anyways, yeah, I got this as a gift for my mom when she spent some time there. Um, and uh, it was only recently in the news, uh, like a year, two years ago, whatever it was, during the uh, forest fire season. Um, there were some forest fires that were closing in on Holden Village, and uh, thankfully it was spared, but, you know, it was a bit of a close one. I actually spent a little bit of my, uh, my own time there. Uh, a little bit of time there myself. Let's try and rephrase that again, shall we, Eva? I spent a little bit of time there myself in, uh, was it 1999 or 2000? Which really dates me, by the way, because I was, I think I was, how old was I? I would have been 18 or 19 at the time, whether it was two, 99 or 2000. But anyways, um, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a Christian retreat, or at least it likes to think it is. Um, but originally, it was a mining village. I don't remember exactly what it, what what kind of ore they were mining. I don't know. But anyways, uh, it was it was bought by the church and it was converted into a, a retreat center of some kind. So um, I went there with the senior high youth group, and uh, I don't remember a lick of what I did. I did a little bit of nature walking, and there were arts and crafts for the high schoolers and. There were some lectures, I think. Like I don't know. I didn't pay attention to it. I because I spent three days underneath the main recreational facility uh, where they had the bar. Yes, it was an actual bar because like this mining town was like from the 1800s or something like that, folded up in the early 1900s, whatever, um, or dried out in the early 1900s, I should say. And um, they had, in addition to a bar. The best part of those three days, I, sp I spent three, almost three continuous days in the miniature bowling alley that they had down there. And it wasn't any, it wasn't a bowling alley like you or I would use nowadays, but this is a bowling alley that required a lot more, uh, shall we say, personal uh, use or personal function behind the scenes. Uh, you still had the automated thing where you drop down the bowling pins, but the thing is, you had, there were four lanes, and there were two people back there responsible for two lanes, two, two of the four lanes, and so you would be standing up, and this is what I did for, for three days, I stood up on the edge there, the, bowl, the bowling ball would come down, it would knock over the pins, and then as soon as I was done, you'd hop down in, you'd hop down into the pit, which was at, you know, at floor level, but you'd have to get up so that the thing didn't whack you, take your legs out, literally, um, bowling balls are heavy, you know, so you'd pick up the bowling ball, put it on the track, and roll it down the side, manually push it down the track. It would drop down a little hill, and it would go out to the, the, the player. And in the meantime, you're picking up the pins and sticking them in this thing. So up and down, up and down, up and down ten times. And then you'd have to hop out of the way, you pull on the string, and then the machine drops down, sets the pins, and then the machine lifts up again and waits for you. And while the other per and then while that lane is being used, you you've hopped into the other lane now, and you're fixing that thing up for the other player. I did that almost nonstop for three days. It was really good exercise. It was really really fun, and oh, I was really really hurting by the end of it too, because just because of the the back and forth, back and forth the whole time. I might have done some nature walking. I mean, you're you're in the middle of the Cascade Mountains, you know. It's a pretty nice view. So yeah, that's that's what this shirt refers to. So, I, I assume it's a pictogram. Is this Lake Chelan, I think? But here's the Cascade Mountains, right here, right on my boobs. And then here in my cleavage is, uh, or my man cleavage is Holden Village. A little, little cross right there. So, yeah, that's what this is. 
So anyways, um, that awkward intro aside, um, this is this is a weird way this is set up. Not just the timing of it, but the way this stuff was announced. So here it is, uh, December 8th, 2017. And we finally, finally got the official pictures and official information from Bandai Plex and Toei regarding the, uh, is it 32nd? Yes, the 32nd. No! 35, 36, 37th Super Sentai series, which is, I'm blanking, what's it called? It is called, it's around here somewhere. The official name, this is the name of it. It's Kaito Sentai Lupin Ranger versus Keisatsu Sentai Pato Ranger. So, ordinarily, when you have a versus uh, movie series, you've got, you know, the, the previous team or the current team versus the next team or the previous season's team. Something like that. And then the two are, 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 are at, each, at, at odds for about five minutes and then there's oh it's a good clear up and oh by the way villains from each side from each tv series have merged to have merged their forces together to create a brand new monster and now we're going to get our our movie exclusive mecca or something like that um i really should have thought about this before i said it such as this for example i don't think this comes from the crossover movie but it serves my purpose for for the sake of this video here to say that you know it's a, it's it's a custom repaint or it's yeah right it's a repaint and a remold uh, that's used for a movie exclusive figure so um but no that is not the case this is not a V Cinema title and it's going to take me a really long time to memorize those ti those titles Kaito Sentai Lupin Ranger versus Kesatsu Sentai Pato Ranger there's been a little bit of debate about whether it's Pato or just Pat Ranger so. Um, you know, I, I'm probably going to flip back and forth in the, in, during this video, at least until we hear it in the show itself, or somebody absolutely nails it down for us. But but aside from the fact that we're getting these pictures about three weeks later than traditionally we have, which is about late August, or I'm sorry, late October, mid-November, it's, it's anywhere in that range where we usually get um, the grainy magazine scans. That's usually where these happen. You, you can't see clear pictures, but it's enough to get an idea of what's going to be happening. And you'll also get prices, you'll get the, the, the sizes of the things, and you'll get a little bit of information about the plot line and stuff like that. But October 2017 came and went, and then November 2017 came and went. Very strange. And so here it is, the first week of December 2017, and we're finally getting them. I was starting to wonder if they were going to try and do a Kamen Rider decade decade thing where they were going to release the the the, the they were going to like try to change what time of year that the Super Sentai series ends. Because remember, when Decade came out, both Super Sentai and Kamen Rider would come out at the same in within the same month. They come out in January or February. I don't remember all of a sudden. But now, because of uh, Kamen Rider Decade, um, now, you know, Super Sentai does... Or, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, Kamen Rider does its debut in winter... Or, God! Kamen Rider now has its yearly debut in summer, which puts it opposite of uh, uh, Super Sentai. So I thought, well, maybe they're trying to do that. I mean, they do have nine characters in uh, Q-Ranger. It's even in the title, how about that? They should have called it Jew Ranger. Uchu Sentai Jew Ranger? I don't know, it kind of rolls off the tongue a little better, don't you think? But, nah, it's just... We got, like, we got the, like, the copyright information, the the copyright filings were in October, or, I'm sorry, were in August, like they should always be. I'm sorry, like they usually are. So I was like, okay, it's going to be the usual schedule. Here is two months later. Good grief. Are you that anxious for uh, Uchu Sentai Q-Ranger to end? Uh, not necessarily. It's been a good show. I mean, it, it, it's just that the Curator had uh, some bumps and bruises kind of near the... Well, I shouldn't really say bruises. But, I mean, they had the Yoshalaki! They had that whole thing. And then they had... Um, uh, they had Commander Show doing his... Uh, what was it called? It? Doing his... Um, uh, his q -let dance. That was really dumb. I never liked the thing, and I said as much... And then we had really, really moody, please go the fuck away stinger for about 
nine too many episodes. That was okay. I just I'm just glad he's gone. I'm glad he's over with. Well, he's not gone. It's just he's not nowhere near as prominent as he used to be. Uh, we had Hibitsky Metal for about four or five episodes. Well, no, actually, it was a bit. It was a bit longer than that. But that was also mixed in with the debut of uh, was it Shishi Red Orion Orion Orion. English for the win. Um, so, you know, once you get past kind of the, the, the catchphrase, which they, yes, eventually they did dumb that down. I think I think it got to the point where they were still producing shows, but the show had started going on the air at that point. So now you're getting audience feedback mid-season. Yeah, the Yosha Lucky thing, it's a nice tag. It's a nice catchphrase. It's just stop saying it so fucking much, please, really. So, uh, yeah, they toned that down. And, you know, once once we got away from Moody Stinger, and we uh, once we kind of got into the Hibitsukai Metal miniseries or whatever it was, it actually started getting interesting around, like, just before Hibitsukai Metal hit. Um, so, uh, I won't say that uh, Q-Ranger is the greatest series, Super Sentai that's ever come out, but I will say it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like... It, it wasn't as bullshit as Ninja was, but it didn't turn me off like... Uh, it, it didn't have like one or two characters that were just an outright turn-off for me. So, uh, yeah, Q-Ranger. It's you said that Q-Rangers has been good, and I think they're up to episode, what, 33 or 34 is coming out this weekend. Something like that. Um, so, we've already had the obligatory uh, pop pop music group episode we've now we've had the obligatory uh, baseball episode uh q ranger verse uh, um q ranger goes to um kyoto or wherever it is you know the obligatory we have to we have to he have the um oh what are they called i'll just say the japanese shrines episode where we visit they they've already done the feudal japan references you know they've they've kind of done the obligatory stuff and no doubt there's going to be a Christmas episode mixed in there somewhere at some point in these next few weeks. I mean, why not? And there'll be a Happy New Year episode, and we know how this goes, you know. Um, in terms of the toys, um, aside from the massive disappointment, and I do mean massive, that is Orion Battler, um, i got to say I'm not too disappointed with the way the toys turned out. This is a quick recap, mind you. Uh, I'm not too, like, offended by what happens. Uh, Gigant ho uh, had some things I liked, and I can see what they were trying to do, but considering it was all, like, it, it is, technically, Ichi Sentai Curator, it's even in the title, is a space Super Sentai, but that being said, they decided to go with Star Constellations, which, by the way, gives us more goddamn bloody animals, you know, just... Uh, animals. I'm sick and tired of animals. But Ava, we had a break with Tokyujur. Well, yeah, we did, but their toy line wasn't any better, really. Actually, his toy line's pretty damn bad, in my opinion, anyways. Um, but back to kind of my my relevance in bringing this up is that uh, it's a very blocky series in terms of in terms of transforming Mecha. Um, they don't really transform, they just kind of, they just move a limb out of the way, and then that's kind of it. I mean, look at Kajiki Voyager over here, it doesn't even transform, you just turn this. Ah, I can't do it with one hand, so you just turn the Q-Tama and that's it. Oh, there's totally the sword thing on the side here, but, uh, you know, you're not really supposed to pay attention to that. But yeah, I mean, the, the Voyagers don't really transform. They just move one limb or two limbs out of the way, whatever it is, and then that's it. And then, you know, Shishi Voyager, Voyager and Ryu Voyager. Ryu Voyager is really the only one that actually transforms. Out of all of them, Ryu Voyager actually does transform. It's simple. It's easy to understand. But yes, it is. Yes, it is a transformation. Giganto o Technically, yes, it is a Transformer, but technically I don't like the way they handled it. So, eh, that can that can go get a different job. Actually, go find a different day job. That's that's what you should do. Because right now, your your job is it's like... Eh, and Qtomagen is not as good as you like to think it is, okay? Alright? 
Um, we had some little highlights. We got our uh, we got kind of a semi return to uh, what was it the the lights of Ginga from Ginga Man. I need to get that DVD set. Doesn't it come out this month? On uh, from Shout Factory, aren't they? Aren't they releasing Ginga Man? I hope so. I'm looking forward to it. Um, like it. So there's not much transformation, but it was pretty enough that it allowed me. To, the The line was pretty enough that it allowed me to ignore the fact that yeah, they are pretty damn simple transformations. And it's interesting. We had a lot of the the gimmick for this year was limb swapping was 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 the the scramble gate that's what the gimmick was so even though one or two of these guys had a little thing you know kind of a gimmicky thing built into them technically technically the gimmick was just combining different it was the scramble gate forgive me i just had dinner so now i got the hiccups so i'm not disappointed with this mecha series but it is bloody animals once again. And even Tokyo Jr. wasn't able to avoid the animals thing, you know, because they had Safari Gao, which is the only mecha that I still really want to get. Oh, then uh, I also want to get that Nightmare Liner thingy that's very much H.R. Geiger inspired thing. I want to get that as well. That thing is badass. It's expensive as hell because it's like P. Bandai exclusive or Bandai collector or whatever it is. It's like three, four hundred dollars just for the one set. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm not rocking that shit, no. It came out as two hundred dollars. I'm like, uh, no, 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 no. Anyways, um, Q Ranger, the 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 Mecca, and and indeed the oh the other thing we got, we got a, a wrist mounted changer. Well, I say wrist mounted changer because well, it is a wrist mounted changer. I just wish that this had been a little further back, and my my wrist had or that the top of the hand was was not covered. You know, that's. That's something that kind of bothers me. Should have taken this and slide it back a couple more inches. I think they, this this rack here or whatever it is, the support structure should have been mounted further forward. You know, it should have been mounted like up here. So at least at least on the toy, you should see what the the lengths they go to literally in the show for the different actors to get this thing onto the forearm, which is technically what this is. It's not a wrist mounted device. It's more of a forearm mounted device. But the nice thing is it also has a gun mounted in it. So you know that's pretty cool. Like that, pew pew pew. So, uh, yay, we don't have a. Um, there wasn't a cell phone changer, and I was really really happy about it. It it was it was not a cell phone changer, and it was technically a wrist changer, because well, it's totally mounted to your wrist, or rather, it totally impedes your wrist, which is why I don't have the strap for it right now. So, in my opinion, the Chu Sentai Q Ranger, except for a few bumps. In, in the road uh, turned out pretty darn well. But we still don't have the super vehicles you know, that, I'm, that I'm hoping for. Uh, which leads us to today's story. So, uh, getting to it, uh, here it is. It says 19 minutes on the counter here. Something really strange happened. In addition to how late we're getting these images, even today, I actually recorded about about 7 hours ago, because it's, it's almost 9pm now, uh, about seven or eight hours ago I did a recording I did a an, an overview of the single picture that we got which I'll be going over again in a moment here and I did this half hour 45 minute video or recording I haven't edited it uh, which is why I'm I'm actually reshooting this right now uh, and taking a lot more time to do it too uh, and I said, you know, it's very, very bizarre that on the day that these pictures are supposed to make their debut, we only get one picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit on this footage for one or two days and maybe they'll trickle in. No sooner did I hit refresh on the video. Like, like I, sh I, I ended the recording, I hit refresh, and lo and behold, a second posting came up with a second picture. I'm like, oh, God damn it, Japan. So... Okay, I'm going to do a recording of that. And then a couple minutes later, another one popped up. So I decided, you know what? Screw it. I'm not going to make a brand new, uh, you know, 45-minute, hour-long uh, rant and ramble on just one picture, only to turn around at the end of that and have another one pop up all of a sudden. So I'm going to wait until the end of the day and see what happens. Turns out that was the right way to go. It only took me uh, 21 minutes to explain this whole thing. So I'm going to be going over the first picture again. Unfortunately, it won't be initial reaction because I've already had my initial reaction. So I'm going to 
do my best to not recreate my initial <gasps> and, <gasps> and uh, that I originally had. And then I will proceed on with the other pictures that have shown up since. You know, just to be on the safe side, I better double check. Um, it's interesting how... Um, mm, 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 yeah, okay, it's interesting how... Um, JE Fusion was the first th that I saw, was the first to release the first picture that the internet has now spread out all over the place. But Toku Nation has the, all of the other pictures at this point. So I'm going to be working off of them. They also have uh, more in-depth translations, prices, things like that. So I'm going to be referencing Toku Nation this time. And no, I don't follow Toku Nation. Like, I, I follow, I just, you know, I check them like once a week or something like that just, just to, to read all the stuff. But I don't actually, I'm not subscribed with them and they probably don't even know who I am, so whatever. So let's go ahead and take a look at this first picture here that they released. If I can get it to open. There we go. Okay. So one of the first things we knew going into this was that they have uh, two, it's going to be two different teams of three. You're going to have the Lupin Ranger and you're going to have the Pato Ranger. Pat Ranger, Pato Ranger. And it's it's literally cops and robbers. Pato is obviously patrol, patrolman. And Lupin is a reference to a famous gentlemanly thief who uh, originates from fiction in the 1800s in France. At least I think it was France. I could be wrong. Um, now, um, if, if you're kind of a, uh, a fan of Japanese fiction, anime, manga, models, games, whatever, then obviously you've heard of Lupin the Third. Lupin the Third was supposed to be a Japanese manga, or was supposed to be a manga version of that character. But for copyright reasons, they couldn't use the original character from the, the original French novels. So the, the mangaka changed the, the, the Lupin character into like his grandson or something like that. That's why he's called Lupin the Third. And I don't know anything about Lupin the Third other than he's sneaky and he's crafty and he's he's a little more Robin Hood type character. So um, that's what he is. So that's what the reference is. Um, oh, by the way, also Lupin also means wolf or wolfen or something like that. So we're looking at a um, we're looking at uh, pa patrol rangers versus uh, thief rangers is essentially what we're now. Lu Lu the word Lupin itself is not an actual Japanese word. It's just they've taken it and run with it. So so the first thing I noticed about the uh, the Lupin Rangers is we've got these Time Ranger masks for a second time. We've got colored visors, which we haven't had since Time Ranger. Time Ranger was the first one to do it. The very second thing I noticed is that, oh my god, their visors are actually top hats. They're, they're, they're tall top hats that you would wear to a to a, a, a formal affair of some kind or something like that, which is great, which I love. Um, and then for the Pato Ranger, their uh, face shields are actually a patrolman's cap or, or a, a police officer's cap, which it's nice that they incorporate that image, but what disappoints me is that the helmets themselves are not a top hat or a policeman's cap. That's the thing that kind of disappoints me. They still have that big egg-on-a-head type helmet, and, yeah, Q-Ranger played around with it a little more than they have in, you know, a very, very long time. But, you know, still, I kind of wish that it had been actual cap. Maybe not one that they could take off or put on. Oh, that would have been interesting, now that I think about it, to, to say that the... the the, the Pato Rangers, they'd take their hat off, and then they would put on a top hat, and that way it could have been, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it it, it kind of would, it would have been a, um, uh, uh, a Tokyujur thing, you know, where they're swapping colors and numbers all the time? It would have been kind of the same thing, so instead of swap, you are like, you take the hat off, and then you put a different one, and then lo and behold, your, your, uh, your armor changes along with it. That's what I, that, that would be kind of cool now that I think about it. It's a shame they didn't implement that. No, we've got Time Ranger with the non-Time Ranger visors on the left side, and then we've got Magi Ranger on the right side with, uh, Time Ranger visors on the helmets. 
<sighs> oh, by the way, we have Magic Ranger capes again. <laughs> Which is... They're short, but... and Oh, yeah, by the way, they have really high collars on them, too. Magic Ranger did not have a high collar. I almost wish they'd done the scarf thing. Like, like scarfs and tokusatsu are really, really old school. They just don't do it anymore. I think the last time you would see anything like that would have been Kamen Rider Double. Might have been the last time that happened. Correct me if I'm wrong, and I probably am. Did Ultraman ever wear a scarf? I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. Um, and the other thing I've noticed is not only is there a contrast in the visors, one is colored visor and the other is a standard black visor, uh, but, but the colors, or I'm sorry, the lack of colors, the Pato Ranger have color with white trim and then the uh, Lupin Ranger have color with black highlight on, or black trim on it. So that's an interesting contrast they have going there as well. Kind of a red light, green light kind of kind of game set up here. Um, I I the uh, oh, why did I click away from that shit? Oh uh, stupid! Oh wait, no, I just I just zoomed in on. Okay, I'm stupid. Uh, their transformation device this year is not a wrist device, and it's not a goddamn bloody cell phone. Thank you, God. Uh, it's actually a gun. Uh, which is like what Kyoryuger did. And don't get me wrong, I like the Kyoryuger gun, which I totally can't remember what it's called. And I really like the sword plugs in, and so it turns into like a bayonet shotgun or something. That was really neat. I did like that, and god damn it, I wish I'd gotten one of them. Would I get the US version that has the light up blade? Uh, I debated it for Power Rangers Down a Charge, but I don't want to encourage Bandai America. So, that's why I didn't get that version. Anyways, but on the other hand, I didn't want to get the Japanese version because I didn't want to have to mess with Samba music every single every single time I turned the thing on. You know, I just, I, I the, the Samba thing, no. So, the idea of having the Henshin device as a weapon is a nice idea, it's all well and good. But, it does seem a bit cop-out. Like, this makes sense because... It's a wrist-mounted device. It's a wrist-mounted changer that, oh, by the way, also happens to have a gun feature built into it. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I kind of wish that it had been just a wrist changer with no weapon feature built into it, but I can't really blame them. Because, I mean, you're, you're going to be using Q as a weapon anyway, so, you know, why would you incorporate a weapon in here? I guess they all need a shooting weapon. Okay. I'll bring that up another time. The fact that they all had a, they all had a shooting weapon as their as their primary uh, common weapon, as opposed to a sword all the time or a baton. Like what the hell did they use in Co uh, Go Go Five? Oh yes, they used batons. <clears throat> so anyways, we're getting a gun changer, which is it's kind of a comp out. It seems kind of cheap. Like I want a dedicated hinging device. That's what I want. And then you can have whatever guns you want to. Uh, the uh, the Seiza Blasters, kind of an exception. Like, okay, I can live with that. Uh, but anyways, we're going to have a gun. It's called the Double Henshinju, which is the... the so it'll be the double double transformation gun. The Hinsh, Double Henshinju, which is going to be pulling a Gal Hunter on us here. If you'll remember back in the, 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 the distant future year of 2001, A Space Odyssey, the uh, DX Gal Hunter actually came in two flavors. The toy, and I, I've said this before, and it's well known, the toy itself was identical, regardless of which box you bought it in, but it's the fact that it was packaged in two different ways that made the difference of whether you got the good version or the bad version. But the toy within and the instructions within and the packaging and everything on the inside, those were identical. It's just the outside. It was the box itself that was different. And so I'm guessing they're going to be trying to pull the exact same thing because they have two different prices and two different names, but the descriptions here are identical. So it looks like you'll kind of get to pick which one you want first. I'm guessing. 
Uh, for example, the first one here, uh, according to Token Nations, the Double Henshin Ju DX uh, Versus Changer Loop and Red Set. Um, this Henshin device is used by the ch both teams, which means the weapon is used by both teams. Includes the Red Dial Fighter, which is the mecha. Can recognize all of the Versus vehicles. Versus vehicles, or VS vehicles, I guess, is the name of the mecha for this franchise. Whether it's Lupin Ranger or Pato... I've got the hiccups. Whether it's Lupin Ranger or Pato Ranger, together and all together, they are called versus vehicles. However, you're going to have the dial fighters and you're going to have the trigger machines, which will be explained in a moment here. Can recognize all of the versus vehicles and contains various sounds and voices. So in other words, these things are going to be talking to us. Eh, whatever. And then right underneath it, Double Henshin Ju Transformation Gun, DX versus, ch uh, versus Changer Patoren Ichigo Set. So one box is, one packaging is going to have not just the gun, but it's also going to have the, uh, oh, what's it called? The Red Dial Fighter is going to be on the inside. And then for the other box, you're going to have the exact same weapon, but the accessory and the package itself is going to look different. What that's going to do for the, the deluxe transformable vehicles, I can't say for certain because, uh, well, they've never done it this way before, so I don't know how it's going to be sorted. But the fact that they're providing the DX... Now, here's the weird thing. Right underneath the description of the two guns, it says versus uh, vehicles DX Red Dial Fighter. Well, the the red dial fighter is part of the uh, the the was it the the Henshinju uh, versus changer. So I mean, so what we're going to be ending up with here for you completists, you'll actually be buying four boxes, the two guns, and then the two uh, versus vehicles, and that will be. And the reason you have to get those two versus vehicles is because one gun does comes with one of the red vehicles, but it does not come with both vehicles. However, since these two boxes, whatever, whatever they're going to look like, I don't know, since these two weapons are going to be uh, packaged differently, means you'll be able to get one of the red vehicles but you won't be able to get the other vehicle unless you buy one of these accessory sets down here. So it's an interesting combination that they've done it that way. They're not just they're not just giving us the the, the weapon and then having a dummy version go along with it, which which is known to happen. Because just because it's convenient here, uh, for the Seiza Blaster, it also came with a Shishi Kutama which was also included with the DX Curano. So you actually had, like, if you bought both of these toys, like I did, then you have actually have two Shishi Kutamas floating around your room somewhere. So they're doing more or less the same thing, except they're saying you're going to purchase this one version. Wow, that is a really loud, brand new garage door opener we have. Holy shit. We're never going to buy from Sears again, I promise. We're never going to buy from Sears again, I promise. We're never going to buy from Sears again. So we're going to be getting... It's an unusual combination. It's an unusual marketing ploy. I mean, they're not just going to be providing a dummy version of... Uh, a di uh, Not a dial fighter. Yeah, a dial fighter or a trigger machine. You're not going to be getting that. Instead, you're going to be getting a true, actual mecha included with your henshin device. It's just that if you want to collect the other red vehicle, well, you're either going to have to buy, you're going to have to buy this weapon a second time, or you can get an accessory set that is sold separately. So we're treating things a little differently here. Uh, I don't know how that's going to go over with fans. I think it's going to be confusing for kids. I think it will be confusing. And for the collectors, I think there might be a little confusion. Well, maybe there's two different versions. No, they're, it's the same toy. It's just they're one of the accessories on the inside. I mean, it would be the equivalent of, um, you know, you can get a Seiza Blaster that has either a, a Shishi Kutama inside or 
you can buy a, a Seiza blaster that has the Oguma Kutama on the inside. You know, you could buy both if you want to, and you can get ah, get out of there. You can, you will eventually get both Kutamas, yes, but you're not going to be getting. But but if you get only one of the changers, then you're going to have to buy the other Kutama separately. That's what's happening here. Took me a really long time to say that. And now to address the issue of why they're called, um, oh, what are they called? They're called Trigger Machines and Dial Fighters. The Dial Fighters are going to be for the Pato Ranger and the, no, I'm sorry, the, I'm sorry, the Dial Fighters are going to be for the Lupin Ranger and the Trigger Machines are going to be for the Pato Ranger. What's the difference? Well, if you look at the Dial Fighters, which is in the, the second bar here, you can see that the three vehicles have little top hats right in the middle of them like it's a dial but at the same time it's a goddamn top hat it's it's a cap just like they're just like their visors have what a clever way to integrate that in and by the way the first time i saw they they had a top hat I'm like why the hell is that in there oh that's why they're called dial fighters okay and then you, the reason they're called the trigger machines is because if you look at that pink arm on the right side there, you'll see that well, it kind of looks like it's got a trigger for a gun facing this direction that's on top of the shoulder. So if you squeeze the trigger, presumably it's going to pop out the accessory, which in the case of pink is going to be a baton. And it says as much in the description here. Let's see. Uh, versus, trigger, uh, versus vehicle DX trigger machine Sango. Uh, versus vehicles used by the Pato Ranger. Mode change gimmick reveals police baton. So in other words, when you pull on the trigger, um, a baton will flip out from... It, it looks like, on, on the, the picture here, it looks like, when I first looked at I thought it looked like a treasure chest, like they were trying to channel Gokaiju or something weird like that. But no, it's actually a baton is... Uh, let's see, how do I describe it? If you can imagine the vehicle... No, that's not good enough, yeah. Oops. Click. Okay. Imagine this is the... I think this is Nego. Yeah, DX Trigger Machine Nego, which is the green one. Uh, it, assuming this is the vehicle, you've got your trigger. If you pull the trigger, then presumably the thing will open up and then a little cannon barrel will... Sweaty fingers. And then a little trigger or then a little little Gatling cannon barrel thingy will pop out. So rather than you opening it up and you pulling the thing out, it's going to be a spring-based gimmick. You, you pull on the trigger, and then, the, and then somehow this barrel will pop out of it somehow. So that's what you're looking at for all three of the trigger vehicles. Or are they trigger machines? I'm sorry, trigger machines. So the red trigger machine, I don't quite know what that one is. Um, DX trigger machine Ichigo... Mode change gimmick, it says, it, there's a question mark here, it says wheels open up, links with other items and kangate. So in other words, we're going to be treating both the trigger machines and the dial fighters, by the way, ground ve vehicles versus air vehicles, I like to point out, we're going to be treating all of them uh, the same as the the Russias, the train Russias from Tokyo. You remember how your train Russia would slide up onto your on your henching device? You could also, if if I'm not much mistaken, you could also put it. You could integrate it into the 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 gun sword gun thingy where you would slide the thing in. And, oh, by the way, it's a boarding pass. What the fuck? So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing a uh, what's um, we're going to be doing the Tokyo thing a second time with the Rashas. Uh, so that's probably why it says uh, in the description of the uh, the uh, the versus changer. I'm just going to call it the versus changer. I don't think that double Henshin Ju DX versus changer. Like yes, that is the correct whole name, but I think it's just going to be called the versus changer. I think that's what it's going to be called. I think that's the common name for it. So anyways, the Versus Changer is going to be treated just like the, the Wrist Changer from uh, Tokyo -Jur. I think it's Russia Changer. Well, I, I don't know. I never watched Tokyo -Jur. I don't care. I don't want to watch it. I heard the show was good, but the toy line was crap. At least in my opinion, the toy line was crap. Anyways, um, 
So yeah, that's what uh, that's what we're looking at in terms of our gimmick. So not only is our gimmick that the vehicle themselves have a spring-loaded feature built into it, but they're also going to be interacting with the hinging device at the same time. Which means those are our primary weapons. I'm sorry, those are our primary mecha. Our primary mecha are nothing but accessories. I mean, at least with uh, Q Ranger, you know, you had the red, you had uh, uh, Shishi Voyager, you had Ryu Voyager, eh, not so much uh, Gigant, Gigant Ho Oh, and very much not Orion Battler, you know, whatever. Um, but it is strange that all the primary mecha are going to be accessory mecha. That's a very curious choice. That's a very curious choice. And there's a reason for this. But we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, there's descriptions of weapons here, but it doesn't. There's no. There's there's no pictures. It's just the one picture. Uh, so we've got the Itadaki Kaito uh, Lupin Sword, which uh, transforms from sword mode to reachable grabber mode with a lever the extremity moves. So I'm guessing it's going to be a sword. That looks like a claw that has a claw at the end, and when you grab the grab the handle, or you're either gonna pull the trigger or you're gonna push on a lever or something, and then the like the end of the blade will open and close. I don't I don't think the blades can actually extend. I don't think that's gonna happen, but I do think there will be a grab a little grabber claw at the end. Is it gonna be a mode change where you like actually move things around? I don't know. It depends on the other pictures that, that I still have yet to get to this evening. Assuming, of course, they're all here. I mean, maybe they're still adding pictures. I, I don't know. I'll be hitting refresh in and out through here to double check on them. The the Kakusei Kabo Mega Bow. Mega. I, th I think it's Mega Bow, which means voice amplifier baton. Mega Bow. Transforms from police baton mode to megaphone mode. Buttons trigger various voices and sounds. Oh, which means we're going to be having a megaphone that turns into a baton, and then we're going to have a sword that transforms into a claw. So it feels like they're doing the um, uh, the Go Buster, the Tokume Sente Go Buster thing, where all of their all their roleplay weapons were multifunction. A pair of binoculars would transform into a sword, uh, and then a camera would transform into a gun. You know, it looks like they're they're doing that again. So, which you know, it, it sometimes that works. I mean, Super Sentai's been doing that for quite a while. And um, get off there, and you know, hello, right here. So, you know, it's not like they haven't they haven't done that before. Um, let's see. And then we have the Versus Vehicle Double Henshin DX Good Striker. Good Striker? What? What? And then there's two other... Uh, there's two other... Uh, okay, so the DX Good Striker, a big versus vehicle used by the two teams. Dial trigger activates. Oh, dial and trigger vehicles activates sounds and voices, which means, in theory, the 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 Good Striker. What is that name? The Good Striker will be able to identify uh, the individual accessory vehicles that attach to it. Has two modes, Dial Fighter and Trigger Machine. Activates sounds and voices when connected to the Versus Changer. So, this got tied with other Versus vehicles to form other robots. Blah, 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 blah. So, here's something a little on the unusual side. We're going to be having a mecha. We're going to be having a mecha. We're going to have a giant robo that interacts with the blaster. That's an interesting choice. Very much reminds me of, uh, oh, what was his name? Uh, uh, Kamen Rider, oh, it's called, like, I, I can think of his, his U.S. name, but I can't think of his Japanese name. Tur, um, 
He was Kamen Rider Torque in Kamen Rider Dragon Knight, but I can't think of what his Japanese name was. Uh, I don't know, some Russian name. Solja? So, Solja? Something that was, or was it Zolja? Something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was. But anyways, that's an interesting choice. You know, I kind of wish that the Ranger Keys from Gokaiju had done that with the Gokaio, where they'd plugged into the back, you know? That, that would have been, and they were the ones that turned the, the dial on the back of the Gokaio. That would have been neat. That would have been nice. I wish they'd done it, and I consider it a missed opportunity. Oh, wait, the, 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 the deluxe legendary Megazord did do that. So, yeah, but I didn't get the legendary Megazords. So, yeah, the Bandai American Ghost, like a big fat one. And then we'll have the Versus Vehicle Kaito Gatai DX Lupin Kaiser set. Set of four vehicles that has the good striker, the red, the blue, and yellow vehicles. Or, I'm sorry, dial fighters. And then there is also the Versus Kitatsu. Uh, is that right? Keisatsu. I'm sorry, Keisatsu Gatai DX Pato Kaiser set. Which is going to have also going to have a set of four vehicles the good striker and trigger machines, Ichigo, Nigo, and Sango. Okay. In other words, the whole thing I went about with the, um, what's it called, the versus changer, the gun, is going to be sold in two different boxes, but it's going to have two different, it's, it's going to have the same gun on the inside of it, but it's going to have different accessories, depending on which box you buy. The exact same thing is now going to happen with the mecha. So the Good Striker can be sold with either all three of the Pato Ranger Mecha, or it can be sold with the Good Striker and the three Dial Fighters. I didn't know that. I know that. They must have updated this, I think. So, oh, that's interesting. So both the Henshin device and the first combining robot are going to be packaged in two different ways, and they're going to have different accessories in them. Interesting. Releasing later in March, the Versus DX Cyclone Dial Fighter. Uh, versus vehicle used by the Lupin Ranger, which is a t twin rotor craft. Mode change gimmick blades. Blades of the propeller open up on the sides. Links with other items can get to... You know, I think that, that DX Cyclone Dial Fighter sounds, excuse me, sounds very similar to... i got to check the name, the yellow one. Sounds very similar to the yellow dial fighter. I'm wondering if that's just going to be a repaint. Because the yellow dial fighter has kind of a saw blade thing on the back, and it also has the V-tail uh, rotors that can fold back and forth. So that's going to be... Uh, I, I don't know. It doesn't say at this time. And then uh, the Versus Vehicle DX Trigger Machine Biker, uh, which is a white police motorcycle. Okay. Mode change gimmick opens up like a yo-yo, goes in all directions. Note, I have no idea what that means. Links with other items and Kengatai. A yo-yo for a police weapon? You know, I wonder if a yo-yo is the closest that Bandai Plex and Toei can get to a, uh, uh, a taser. You know, that has the two... Or to, to, to a stun gun that has the two electric cords that come out of it. I'm wondering if a yo-yo is kind of the best thing they can come up with. So, we'll, we'll see how it turns out. I mean, whether it's a motorcycle or not, I'm guessing that's what the analogy is for it. That's going to be funny if they do that. So, what I'm seeing so far... Uh, by the way, I might as well point it out now just so I don't forget about it. Um, super vehicles. Okay, so there's a couple of things there that I didn't know about eight hours ago. There's a couple of things I did know and a couple of things I didn't know, so we'll see what happens. And now we move on to the uh, the other images which have popped up in the last oh, eight hours now. So, actually, you know what? I'm going to go to their homepage and I'm going to double check to see if... Nope, they have not. Okay, 
So it looks like it might be safe to proceed from here on out. Now, I know this has taken... How long has this taken? 52 minutes just to get that far. Holy shit. I'm going to have to do some editing. <clears throat> I will be doing some editing. But there is a lot of content in just this one picture to work with, so yay. And I can only assume that the, the following pictures will be able to take a closer look at the mecha and the weapons and things like that, so... Hopefully at this point I've already covered a good portion of it. It's amazing what you could see with a good quality photo, you know? You can learn a lot. Uh, the next page, first look at Pato Kaiser and Lupin Kaiser from Lupin Ranger versus Pato Ranger, and this is going to be the primary mecha. Holy shit. Now keep in mind, the picture that I've been working with up to this point was cut right down the middle, right on the, uh, I'm guess yeah, that's the Pato Kaiser. So I didn't, I haven't seen the whole thing yet. This is the first time I've seen it. Oh! Interesting choice. Huh. Let's see, where's... Well, this picture is a lot better compared to the one I was just looking at for... Uh, that I just did, spent the last 50 minutes working off of. This picture is a lot bigger. One thing I've noticed is the red vehicle forms both the chest and the helmet. This is so bizarre to see a... Uh... Oh! There's actual transformation in the dial fighters. There is actual transformation. Looks like the shoulder unit... Um, it looks like either the shoulder is going to be stationary compared to the joint. So either the, the shoulder armor is going to be stationary and then we're going to have the arm section is going to fold up. Or you're gonna attach you're gonna attach the uh No fucking way. Okay, so Pato Kaiser doesn't have it, but those dial fighters are freaking me out here. If I don't fucking know better, I swear to I swear to God those elbows are actual elbows and they have a swivel on them. What? No fucking way. Is that just me? Is that just me or do they, they have actual like elbow joints? Not only can they swivel, but they can also ratchet in this direction. Is, is that just me? Oh, and then, by the way, they've got shoulder armor that pivots. Is that just me? Or is that actually a thing? Oh, my God, if it is. Oh, my God. Now, it doesn't have it on uh, Pato Striker. It doesn't have that. Or, or, I'm sorry, Pato Kaiser, Pato Striker. Oh, I'm thinking of Pat Striker, which was uh, Decker Red's uh, police vehicle, Decker machine. Okay, so, so Pat, Pato Kaiser. Uh, Pato Kaiser doesn't have the articulation, but holy shit, if Lupin Kaiser doesn't have it, it, I mean, because the color of the forearm looks different from the color of, shall I say, the elbow pit? Is that is that what that's called? It looks like this section's a different color from what's up here, and there's a perfect split right there. I'm wondering if that's an actual swivel. And I'm wondering if it's an actual elbow because of the clearances that are here. Wow! Wow! Holy shit! Wow! And the faces are different. Okay. <clears throat> I have no idea what's going on with the chest of uh, Pato's... Uh, I almost did it right there. Pato Kaiser. I think there's going to be some actual transformation in those red vehicles. 
it's it's going to be kind of similar to the the transformation for the the red vehicle the two red vehicles is going to be similar to how um how do i describe it um oh what was it called i've seen car ranger and Kai ranger was it was okay but all of a sudden i can't think of what the red uh, it, it was called Red Lightning and Power Rangers Turbo, so forgive me, I'm referring to the Power Rangers Turbo. But it's going to be, it's or no, it's actually a little more similar to how the uh, the Red Turbo uh, vehicle from uh, Turbo Ranger back in the 80s, 1980s. Um, you just attach it to the chest, and then you and then you you kind of split the thing in half and fold it around the top of the torso. So it looks like that's how those transform. Okay, fair enough. Um, but I think there's going to be a little extra because this this one picture is so tiny for uh what's it called trigger machine ichigo that i'm wondering if there's going to be some actual transformation and notice there's that big red it looks like a dial i mean it looks like something that could spin maybe that's just a leftover from you know we have to have the uh uh, we have to have the vehicle roll along, but, you know, we don't have enough clearance, so we're going to put an extra wheel on the inside. Maybe that's what they're going for here. I'm not certain. We're going to have legs that, not only do they, they're going to snap together, but they're also going to be telescoping. And there's some panels on the outside of the knees that I don't recognize yet. Wow. I'm getting excited. This is good stuff. This is good stuff. And how interesting is it that the Good Striker... Oh, I can't get over that name. That's driving me nuts. I ho Honestly, I hope that Power Rangers, whatever this is called in the future... Oh, God, how is Power Rangers going to adapt this thing? Oh, we can't, we're going to skip over it because it isn't marketable. You better fucking market it. Like you skipped over the trains, you cowards. Um, what am I talking about? I, obviously, they are. Oh, there's another difference. The waist is different because the Pato Kaiser, just above the, the pelvis, are some blue panels, which I don't recognize. But then... Oh, wait. Um... Hmm. Okay, that might not be part of the Good Striker itself. Uh, it might be, might be related to, okay, it's not that, uh, that might be related to, uh, how can I, what, what, what can I call it, uh, the, uh, the Ichigo, uh, Trigger Machine Ichigo, how that thing, there might be, like, a fender on the front of it that becomes, like, additional, like, waist armor or something like that, and so it may have blue painted on the other side of it. squeaky old chair from the 1970s. <clears throat> I also get an e there's also an echo of uh, Time Ranger, again, not just the helmets, the the, vi the colored visors they're using, but the fact that we've got, it's, it, this is so interesting, they've got a, and this is actually something I've been wanting Super Sunday to do for a really long time, is to have a single um, robot that transforms into a single vehicle and then have, if you must have accessory vehicles, have those pile up around the around the legs and around additional arms and, and armor and stuff like that. So they're kind of meeting me halfway here for this thing, and I'm like, damn, it's about time. Now, I want to say that uh, something like Grand Sazer, the Sazer series, which was also competition, I, I want to say, uh, wasn't that Subaraya Productions that made... Uh, was it Subaraya or Toho that produced the Sazer series? And there were, there were like three or four different series, which I wish I kind of wish I'd gotten into them at the time. I can't remember why I didn't didn't pursue them. But anyways, they did something similar. They had a mecha where it was kind of a single robot that was humanoid. I don't know if it transformed by itself or not, but it was a single humanoid robot. And then there was a vehicle that would fly in that was independent and it the the vehicle would break apart and form armor around this single one and no I'm not thinking of Gridman it's not that although I do have the superhuman samurai cyber squad uh, mecha I do have all three of those but anyways um 
this is a really interesting this this is a, a refreshing way to to mix up the transformation that's just beyond three vehicles or <clears throat> three animals combined to form a single mecha or having five vehicles and one of them's really big and the others are just the head or just the torso or just the arms or just the legs you know they they're mixing it up a little bit so yeah there is going to be a large mecha in the center of this but it's interesting here because it works for two different teams and the way the accessory vehicles are treated changes how this thing looks. I'm wondering if the Good Striker... I cannot get away from that name. That's, that's just bugging the shit out of me right now. I'm wondering if the Good Striker uh, is going to be its own robot. Now, obviously, the Good Striker is going to transform into a vehicle of some kind because there's, there's wheels here and then there's wheels on the, on the outside of the shin. So, obviously, it's going to transform into a rolling vehicle of some kind. But... The question will be if it can transform into a robot all by itself without any of the trigger machines or any of the dial fighters attached to it. That's that's what I'm curious about. Will it matter if it does? Not necessarily, no. Uh, but it would be a nice little thing if they throw it in there. Like, oh, we can't get any of the vehicles. Oh, wait, there's a backup canopy somewhere in here. We'll just hop in there and pilot the thing. It's very underpowered. No, we're going to go with it anyways. We can only use it for a quick escape. Okay. So, I mean, maybe, maybe they'll try, you know, sneak something like that in there. Oh, this is exciting. This is exciting. And it's super vehicles that actually look like super vehicles. You know, they have the gimmick built into them, and as far as I can tell, like, ew, I just saw the green gimmick. Ew. It's just a water faucet that, it's, it's just a megaphone that flips around, and there's probably a bunch of barrels or something on there and there. Ew. No, don't do this to me. Because you can't see it in that really tiny picture down there. Oh, I hope that's not how... Because it, it, uh, I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But it looks right now like you just have like a, a flower, uh, a watering can nozzle that flips over. And oh, by the way, there's a bunch of cannon barrels on the inside. Gross. Or wait, what? what is the... Uh, what is the Nego? Trigger Machine Nego. Mode Change Gimmick Reveals Cannon. Okay, so what's the Blue Dial Fighter? Mode Change Gimmick Gatling Attack! Exclamation. Hmm. I th okay, maybe it's just like a single barrel. Oh my god, it's going to be a flashlight. It's going to be a it's going to be a flashlight beam cannon thingy. Uh. I don't care. I don't care. At, the, at this point, I don't care. Like, until I get it into my hands, this is cool shit right now. This is exciting. This, uh, depending on how the good striker transforms, again, that name, um, I think it is okay that the limbs have the built-in gimmick and then the actual mecha itself does the transforming. If it's only as much as the legs separate and then telescope down and then that's it disappointing but on the other hand it's an actual transformation so i think i can forgive it at this point it'll also depend on what the the good striker looks like by itself is there any other picture on this page uh no that's just a duplicate of the of the first page oh this is awesome this is awesome next page Lupin, Ver Lupin Ranger versus Pato Ranger. Good strike mecha. Good striker mecha revealed. Continuing the slow but steady release of information for the forty second. Forty second. I said thirty second. Oh my god. How far behind am I? Forty second Super Sentai series. I was off by a whole decade. I'm sorry. The 42nd Super Sentai series, we now have another new picture online. This time we get a closer look at the Good Striker, a weapon used by both Ranger teams. The photo in question will show the Dial Fighter configuration. Another mode known as the Trigger Machine remains unseen at time of writing. The Good Striker can also combine with the as yet unrevealed hinging device to form a special weapon for both teams. Be sure to look at our. Get to the picture. Oh my god! No! No! No, you didn't do that! No! <laughs> oh 
What is that shit? No, don't do this to me. Why would you put... Ah! Oh, the good striker attaches to the top of the versus changer, turning into a giant blaster. So it is both the mecha by itself and an accessory which also attaches to the... Hello. Has a dial on the on the thing. Oh! Oh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. I get it now. This, and, and they say it right there in the, in the... This time we get a closer look at the Good Striker weapon used by... The photo in question, which is this thing, shows the Dial Fighter configuration. Another mode known as Trigger Machine remains unseen. Okay, 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 so maybe I don't have to panic just yet. The Trigger Machines are all rolling vehicles. They're all cars and trucks and buggies and whatever. And then the Dial Fighters are all aerial vehicles. So it looks like not only... Do the does patent uh, Pato Ranger and Lupin Ranger not only do they have their own individual vehicles, accessory vehicles, but the Good Striker itself is also multi mode. Damn. I'm gonna go broke this year. <laughs> I am going to go I am gonna be so broke by the end of twenty eighteen. This is gonna hurt. So it looks like the Good Striker has, not only does it transform into a, a robot form, I don't, I don't see any arms yet, but I'm not looking for them yet. Uh, not only does it have uh, the, the robot configuration, but for the Good Striker uh, dial fighter form, which is what we see here, it's an air vehicle. Well, sort of. So presumably... The other version of the Pat Striker is going to be... Or no, I'm sorry. The other version of the Good Striker... I'm going to want to see... I'm going to be seeing Pat Striker for days. I'm sorry. The The other version, the, the Pato Ranger version of the Good Striker is going to be some sort of a rolling vehicle of some kind. Okay. Okay. That unders, that makes sense. And that's that's awesome. Oh my God. That is amazing. I don't quite get the bird thing. Like, that's kind of what threw me off initially. But now that I know what I'm looking at, maybe it's because they're a flight risk? Okay, 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 okay. You know, I wonder if that, that, that dial that you can see on the back of the Good Striker, if that's a detachable thing, or if that's part, or if that's integrated in. It's, it's a little difficult to tell at this point. I'm guessing the dial sections, the battery compartment, is going to be in the torso. Because obviously the nose section here is the legs just, you know, flipped in a certain way. So I'm guessing the dial the dial section... Oh, wouldn't that be awesome? Oh, let me look at the, the, the Kaisers. Maybe the torso also changes depending on which, which mode it's in. It's a little difficult to tell. Even th this is a nice, generous, big picture. But it's difficult to tell if the the center torso actually rotates like that. And it also forms... Okay, so, wow. Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. I don't quite get the orange bird face, but I can live with it. I can... Uh, like, like, now that I know what I'm looking, like, looking at, I was like... Uh, Okay, all right, I'll give that to you. It's weird, but I guess I. All right, I'll I'll I'll, I'll let it slide. I guess it's good enough. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, last page. Hopefully, we got some more information. 
Kisatsu Sentai Pato Ranger Trigger Machine revealed. Yet another new image for the new Super Sentai series has been posted online. This is our first look at the Trigger Machine configuration of the Good Striker weapon, a form used by the Kisatsu uh, Sentai Pato Ranger to power attacks and summon mecha. While the previously revealed Dial Fighter configuration is aircraft based, this Trigger Machine, the Trigger Machine is automotive based. Hashtag in before. Okay, so here's here's the moment of where we determine, like, is this actually a good transforming... Are the vehicle modes worth it or not? Uh... No. No! That's not how you do it! What is that supposed to be? You fold up the nose, you fold up the wings, and that's it? All that enthusiasm I had, I had a little bit ago has just just, just gone bleh. Ah, uh, that's disappoint. No. I was so happy. On the other hand, it gives us a close... This picture also gives us a closer look at uh, Trigger Machines Ichigo, Nigo, and Sango. So I guess that's something. Is it just me or Sango... Is that supposed to be like a train? Like a steam train or something? I don't know. I, I imagine it's a little confused too as to what exactly it wants to be. It's, I mean, it's not exactly a cockpit we're looking at there. Oh, oh, it's the it, oh, it's the headlights. The headlights for Trigger Machine Ichigo. There they are. Okay, so I was right. It does have some fenders. It's it's a race car. It's an indie 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 Formula One race car thingy. It has a fender, and then the fender has blue headlights on it. That becomes waist armor for uh, Pato Kaiser. All right, so I I called it. But uh what what is that supposed to, is is that supposed to be just a The trigger machine is automotive based. How exactly is that automotive based? Oh darn, the feet don't uh the feet for the Kaiser, they don't fold like I thought they would. Darn. Hmm. Boy, talk about whiplash. I was in a good mood until just now. I kind of see what they're trying to do, but the problem is, if if only they'd hidden that face a little, that that bird head or whatever it is, a little better. Maybe have the um. No, because the telescoping thighs are inside the shins at this point have to put that there because that doesn't okay maybe they didn't have the space for the nose or maybe they could have had the nose instead of having the nose fold upwards onto the back of the shins onto the back of the legs is where the nose is which is obviously a heel spur I'd like to point out rather than having it fold up maybe they could have found some way to have it have the nose split apart to either side so that it would form the sides of the uh, like a, um, a lar like a large continuous fender or a, a bumper of some kind like maybe they're trying to turn into like a, a muscle car thing of some kind I don't I don't think they're trying to summon the Batmobile here although there is some echo there, there's a little bit of echo of the Batmobile in here pick whichever one you like it's 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 there um Hmm. Wow. Okay, so... Hmm. Interesting. That aircraft is deceptive. I wish they could have folded the the front wheels under somehow. But then in 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 the pato 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 striker uh, pato good striker pat good striker pato I guess pato ranger. I wish the the nose had flipped around. Uh, may, maybe they're trying to make the nose on the on the 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 truck car whatever. Maybe they're trying to make it look like an engine block of some kind on the top.
Uh, so what are those panels? Um, they've got those panels covered up every time. I wonder what's going on here. Those odd panels they're along the uh, along the knee of the of the Kaiser Kaiser Robo. What what the the Lupin? What, what's what's it called? Lupin Kaiser and Pato Kaiser. There's some odd panels. I'm trying to look what what happens to them. It looks like it's just part of the bodywork of the two vehicles, and it's just it's just permanent permanently there. Huh. Huh, huh, huh. Check to see if JE Fusion's updated anything. Lupin Ranger versus Pato Ranger Customs and Zord Review. Super Sentai 2018 A plus more phenomenal. Oh god. More phenomenal. Uh so nineties race. It's like Kawabunga from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You know, it died out pretty damn fast. I mean, even I said it when I was a kid, and I don't say it anymore. Who the hell says Kawabunga anymore? Who the hell says more phenomenal anymore? I sure don't. Hmm. Well, aside from decoration, it does transform. But it looks like it doesn't. I mean... I, I think it's safe to say at this point that the the, the good striker does not have a uh, does not have an independent robot mode like I thought it would, which unfortunate, but it's not going to be that's not going to be a disappointment for me. I'm not I'm not going to hold that against it. It would have been nice, yes, but hmm. yeah, I was I was just looking at the wing design between the two the two modes and it looks like the wing. The wings might actually be made of two different sections. If, at first I thought it was a panel, like the wingtip would it, like collapse inwards or something like that. But now I'm wondering if instead it's not that it, because I'm not seeing a joint. I'm not seeing a joint in there anywhere in there. So instead of pivoting like this, I think instead it's just ABS and then PVC wingtip. That's probably what it is. Which, eh, whatever. The fact that it attaches to the, the, the weapon is an interesting choice. Gosh, all of the mecha... Okay, so not only are all the rangers... None of their mecha are in the core. They're not in the legs, and they don't form the, the, the center, the torso. All they do is they form the head, the chest, and then the arms. That's an interesting choice. That's That's... Not bad yet, but it is interesting. It, it it is different. It is different for for Super Sentai. Oh yes, it is different. Initial purchasing uh, commentary. Uh, yes, I will get the vehicles, and yes, I'll be getting the versus uh, changer. So everything like. I don't purchase action figures of the Rangers themselves. Never. That's a lie, Ava, and you know it. Uh, so, like, the, 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 was it the SH figures or whatever they're called? They're not figure arts, but the, the uh, so Boofy, I think is what they're called. Uh, I won't be getting any of those, obviously. That, that doesn't even cross my mind. Uh, am I opposed to the costume designs? No. Uh, am I opposed to the, uh, the weapon choice? No. No. <laughs> This is good shit. This looks good. This looks. This is. This is good shit. Dare I say, somebody at Plex was finally fucking listening. Yes, we have gimmicky accessory mecha that, that that's limb swap, and yes, it will be limb swap. But they're 
less the, the the gimmick itself like yeah there's the trigger fighters and then there's the dial thing they are less focused on having the gimmick take up the entire length of the accessory and they're more concerned about how they're attaching the thing and what it looks like when it is eventually attached they're more worried about visuals than they are about gimmick yes it has a gimmick but they're more concerned about how it looks when it's all done. That's the impression I'm getting off of these two mecha. That's the impression I'm getting. I feel like somebody, somebody at Plex, or somebody at Bandai, whichever one it was, somebody's finally listening. Somebody's finally you know, we need to get back to this classic Super Sentai thing we did where we were focused more on the appearance of things and how they transformed and less about the gimmick. Yes, this has a gimmick, and that's not to say that... Uh, uh, it, it, this feels a little more Gow Ranger or a little more Hurricanger in how it treats its its gimmick accessories, how it treats those those gimmicky accessories, which is what I just said. Why am I repeating that? Because Gal Ranger is treated differently. The fans generally treat the the power animals from Gal Ranger. They usually treat those differently. Sometimes people like technically yes, it is limb swap, but a lot of people don't count them as limb swap. At least they not not nearly to the degree of the the, the bullshittery we've been getting since two thousand three. You know, and, and even this is arg arguably this isn't really limb swap. It's not limb swap as a gimmick. Mostly because of the 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 got the 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 scramble gatai, so I'm under the impression that Q Rangers kind of getting a pass. And oh, by the way, few if any of the limbs actually have a gimmick built into them. The gimmick is the cross gatai, or I'm sorry, the scramble gatai. So I'm I'm under the feeling I'm under the impression, and correct me if I'm wrong. Somebody, I don't know who, maybe it was a change in, in, in leadership, it was a change in marketing strategy, a change in um, uh, department heads, or maybe they're finally listening to the fans and the fans are saying, you guys need to calm down with this shit kind of tired of the gimmicky thing it's like yeah we like the gimmicks but we like transforming more yeah we like the gimmicks but yeah we like the visuals more and this 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 is crucial this is crucial this this is an important step right here what we're looking at here pato kaiser lupin kaiser um and also well, maybe not so much the 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 role play weapon, the one the one gun we have. Oh, oh, by the way, the the, the um the versus changer, which is the henshin device. We've seen that. It's it's just this tiny. I'm guessing there's gonna be more photos tomorrow. Um, but it looks like um we haven't we have none of these the four pictures I've gotten here so far. None of them have there. There's another set of weapons. That we haven't seen yet, the Lupin sword and the Mega Bow. We haven't we haven't seen either of those, which is the the slightly personal or the the team specific personal weapons that they have. Um, the other thing we haven't seen here so far is there's no mention of a combining blaster of some kind or a combining weapon of some kind where you, where all three Rangers have their unique personal weapons and then they put them all together. They they haven't been done they haven't been doing that for quite a while now, so. Um, but there's no indication of that happening either. I honestly didn't know what to expect with this series going into it, like the, the, the visuals and everything. I had this... This is interesting. This is, this is very, very interesting. And it's... It's rubbing me in the right way it's not it's not deceptive well i i say deceptive it's not that q ranger q ranger was better at hiding the fact that they don't transform that's what q ranger did 
there's still, you know, incredibly, and I've said this, you know, five, six times at least now, the, the individual mecha, they don't transform very well. Uh, and then there's, you know, there's the combining thing, whatever, but, and it had a blocky appearance, which is nice and all, but it's still, technically, it's still a block former. Technically, all of them are block formers. Even, uh, um, the Kojishi Voyagers is, well, no, Kojishi Voyager is not a block former. Kojishi is, is kind of like half parts former. So, it's different. It's kind of unique in terms of all of them. But I'm getting a good vibe. I'm getting a good initial vibe off of uh, Lupin Ranger versus Pato Ranger. I'm, I'm. This is working. This is working. I, I think they. I think maybe, uh, Q Ranger told them. It, they're, 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 the way they sold and the way they marketed told them we value the, 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 the visual appearance, we value the transformations over the gimmick. And, and, and if you think about it, other than the Scramble Gatai, Q Ranger doesn't have a gimmick. It doesn't, I, I mean, well, there, I mean, there's, the, there's these things, but we're like, can we have a little more? Like, we like this, take it one small step further, and then we're good. But we don't need each vehicle. We don't need each accessory to have its own unique gimmick. Like, have it uniquely transformed, yes. But it doesn't have to have its own unique gimmick. It looks like they, they, they're they finally listening. They're finally they're finally getting what makes these things interesting. Uh, good strikers. Uh, I don't know. I think the name is funnier than the actual appearance of the thing when it's by itself. I think the combined form will be more interesting, but... Um, I'm getting a good vibe off of this. I'm starting to repeat myself at this point, but yeah, I'm, I'm starting to like this. Oh my gosh, uh, an hour and a half. Ugh. Hmm. <laughs> All right. This is a good start. I'm satisfied. This, this, this works. This, this is this go. This is going in the right direction. I like this. Before I repeat myself too much more, this is Ava Unit Four A saying, "Thank you for tuning in."